Howdy folks, Kyle here with another Godot tutorial. In this case, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about my brand new state machine implementation. This implementation is pretty different probably from things that you're used to. And the reason for that is I actually am able to use an animation tree to control the state of my state machine. And that is sort of like the holy grail of state machine implementations because normally, you know, you have to use the actual state machine to control you know where the playback goes and the problem with that is sometimes that will make it so that your logic has to be duplicated across multiple states and I never liked doing that I, I prefer to keep logic that is going to be across multiple states in my player there's no reason to have it be in the individual states if it's just copied so Ultimately, my states are much simpler than the average set of states that you'll see. And I'll show you that here eventually. Let me show you the, uh, the tree here first. So, as you see, we've got the uh, move, fall, attack, and jump states. These correlate to just simple animations that I have in the animation player. Oh, and one really nice thing, too, is having the animations be separate from the states we can kind of manipulate which states give you which animations and vice versa. It's, it's a, actually a really nice thing. It's very flexible, much more than trying to ensure that your, you know, your states always play the right animations and stuff. Uh, you can have more logic in the states if you want, and I'll show you how I've done that with one of the states. But for this implementation, you don't have to. It's perfectly fine to have some logic in the player and some logic in the states. Okay, and let's go right into the actual state machine implementation. So as you can see, in the init, we just take the playback, we take the actor, which is just equal to the, uh, the parent of what I'm calling the parent, which is in this case, the list of states. So we take in the states node here. Um, you can set that up however you want, like take in the children for the states or whatever. But I have it so that the state machine is always at the base. So it makes sense just to have it get that automatically. Um, have some debug stuff and then the set states call. Set states sets my actual values for the nodes themselves and simply adds them to a dictionary of states nice thing about that is we can reference other states if we want to but in general we won't have to because our actual animation tree is going to be controlling that and it does that through the run call so when we are normally you know running our player we've got physics process we've got playback being called to travel to the various states and then we've got state machine dot run delta and then we just have the current velocity being move and slide or move and slide with snap depending on effectively how the, the state itself decides but the state machine dot run delta is really where the key is at here because what happens is if the playback is defined it looks at the current node. Now this value is actually a string of the name of the node, which means if you want to change the name of the node to something else, that's how you can kind of manipulate this. So the animation, I believe, will stay whatever it was that you'd find, and then from there you can kind of you know, manipulate things however you want. So it looks at that current node and says, well, that is now the next state. And it does this every frame. As you can see from the player, it checks it every single physics frame. So as soon as it changes to a new state, it'll look at that and say, okay, that is the next state. It's not equal to the current state, presumably. If that's the case, then if the current state is null, then we terminate the current state and set the next state and then initialize that state. Now I have something here with has method dot initialize input. This is just for player states. Uh, basically, all my states have access to the input, uh, and I didn't want to copy-paste it between them, so I made a base state that just has the initialized input. I'll show you that in a little bit. But that just handles setting up the various uh, 
you know, base values that all states have access to. And then it just calls current state dot run delta as well. So essentially it's just coordinating all of the individual states that way. Now let's take a look at the individual states. We'll go to move first. I don't have an idle because the game is an infinite runner, so there's not really any idle time. For move, we're telling it that it should snap velocity, so that's on the actor. That's just an initialize. I notice this uh, inherits or extends the applies gravity state. I'm going to show that in a little bit. I do have a max and min move speed here, as well as allow change speed. These things are from a different uh, implementation of this, so I probably could just delete them, but I haven't had the time to make sure that that works yet, so I'm uh, not not implementing it just yet. Oh, and this current move delta, that definitely can go away. That I know is not used anywhere. Um, but yeah, so all I do is when the move state runs, this is what's called ultimately, if the actor's on the floor and they pressed up, I can switch my state here to jump, and the actor can... Uh, because of this little tiny hack here, uh, it's notice it still has should snap velocity. So just for one little frame, I'm gonna just move it up a little bit so it's off the floor and then the jump will actually function a lot better. Um, otherwise it could snap and we don't want that. We have this call here, if speed up, set the move speed higher, if speed down, then set it lower. And then it immediately sets those to false. So we get those for only one frame. So you're going to increase by 20. And it'll stay there because that, that's stored you know, here in this export. Or it'll decrease by 20 and that's stored there as well. But it'll only do it for one frame. So it'll keep it you know, across frames, the current move speed. So if it goes up by 20, that'll remain. But it'll only increase it by 20, one frame. So that's how we prevent it from just spinning out of control going way too fast okay so that's a really simple state um, this is how you would make it using this switch state and i'll show you that in just a second here i just want to show you jump so when it switches to jump it goes to initialize says should snap velocity is false um, if we're jumping higher this is a property here as well then just do you know higher value basically if it's lower then we do a lower value we just divide by the same amount and then if it's neither of those then we just do the jump strength and notice this only works for one jump effectively because it only applies for one frame um, it will uh, go back to normal strength after that so it literally does only apply for one jump in this case. Um, so the current velocity, this is another thing that needs to be added. This didn't feel like logic that should be in the actor, or in other words, in this case, in the player. Um, this is very specific to jumping, so I was completely fine putting it in here, and we just add the floor velocity. That makes it so when you jump, if the floor is moving, it'll add in that velocity and prevent you from having to manage that yourself so that's really nice and notice jumping is only on the way up so i also have fall but look at what fall does it does nothing all it does is this applies gravity state ultimately so if we go to that we can see what that does all it does is apply gravity to the velocity and then calls this on run so any state i have where gravity should be applied which in this case is all of them this automatically runs and i don't have to have this logic copy pasted between all my states it just inherits it and it automatically works if i go up a little further to finite state machine player state this is where i have that initialized input and so now all my states have access to well did i press the attack button is the actor currently on the floor has anything been pressed left right or up have those been pressed etc so that's just a really nice little thing and then the base state itself 
very simply it has the state machine it has the actor has playback we don't have to have the warning on here because it is actually used i notice switch state this is from before it just says if the playback exists then travel to that state so very straightforward stuff here nothing that requires uh you know too much effort my gravity is set here so if i need to manipulate that i can do that still uh, in this case for this game i'm not doing that and so ultimately what really happens is i call travel and go to these different states here in this you know in the player and that's just in the playback for the animation tree but because my state machine runs after that it'll look and say oh i'm in the move state i should be doing what move says so then it goes to the move state and says initialize and it calls this code on run so it's really nice little you know bit of code that makes it so the animation tree now controls the animations and my states don't have to and the nice thing about that is if i were to you know make uh the state only resume whatever it was doing after attacking by waiting until the attack is fully completed you know basically going in here going into my inspector and having this be at end but auto advance for example then whenever i jump and then attack it will automatically go back to move but it'll do it at the end of attack so if i have a really long attack my actual state machine will remain the logical state machine will remain in attack until it's done and until this has gone back to move and only then will my state machine go back to move as well so it's a, a fantastic way to control these things um you really like it's it's very very clean and it's not something that a lot of people really um tend to tend to manage you know they they tend to get to the point where well maybe each of their states will call uh to set the next state and they'll set the next animation all of them will have the same logic for that except it's just you know they're deciding which animation to show um each one will have different states and stuff and you can still do that if you want with this especially with the switch state command um but the fact is you don't really have to so as you can see everything just works there's the attack state all right you can see at the bottom it's physically uh switching states at the right time notice a jump and then only when you're going down it switches to fall and then only when you touch the ground it goes back to move i of course i'm watching the bottom now so hard to play the game itself because it's an infinite runner <laughs> yeah and that's about it that's uh pretty much all i wanted to show um so it's really nice that it's uh you know it, it, having the debug turned on it'll show you and make sure that everything is working exactly the way you want it to and that's about it i think um that's where i'm going to call it so thank you and uh good luck in your endeavors bye